Let's talk about pointers. A pointer is a type of reference and as the name sort of hints, it points out something else. And one thing you can use pointers for is to read or write memory that sort of lives somewhere else. So let's look at an example of this. So here is a small program and if we run this program, then it prints just eight. So how does this number eight come about? Well, in the main procedure here, the first thing we do is we create a variable called number and in it we store seven. This number will then be of type integer or int. And we then fetch the address of number using the ampersand here. And this is called the address of operator. This fetches wherever in memory is, is number stored because number is a local variable within this uh, procedure here, but the memory of that thing has to live somewhere. And uh, what this thing does is just that it fetches the address of that. And this address is just a big number that says where in the computer's memory does it live. So that address will then end up in number pointer here and number pointer is then a pointer. So a pointer is essentially something that stores an address to something. And we take that pointer and we send it into increment number here. An increment number is this procedure here. This procedure has a single parameter called num and it the type of this procedure is pointer to integer. So like I said, the, the, the type of number here is int, but it's um, inferred. So we don't need to put that. And when you have something of type int and you do address of, then you get a pointer to that thing. And that's how you write the, this is how you write that type. This is a pointer to an integer. So this thing does not contain the value seven. It just contains the address to that value seven. And what we do inside here is that we fetch this thing here, fetches the number uh, that this uh, pointer refers to and adds one to it and then it stores it back. And you can look at the position of this uh, pointer symbol here. On the type name, we put it on the left. That means pointer to integer. But this, is, this here is the, the name of this parameter. And then if we put it on the right of the name of this pointer parameter, then that means that we are, we can use that to read or write through the pointer. And in this case here, since it's on the right side of this uh, equal sign, we fetch the value, we read through the pointer here, we add one to it, and then we can also write to it by putting it on the left side of the equal sign here. And I think it's quite good to, to use this terminology, read through and write through, because what you're doing here is you're going via an address to something else and either fetching the value there or writing the value there. So you, you read and write through a pointer. So since this modifies the value that the pointer refers to, since we sent in a pointer to this variable here, then and, and since we add one to it, then quite naturally when, we, when this procedure ends and we come to this line where we print the value of number, it will print eight, just like we saw down here. So just to show you that the pointer is truly just a number internally, that this address that it contains is just a number. To show you that, I have added these prints here. Here I, have, here I print the pointer here, and then I add one inside increment number as well. And if we now run this, we see that it prints eight, but before that, it also prints these two numbers. And we see that it is the same number in both cases. That's because it's the same address. We have one, we have fetched the address of number here and we send it, send it into here and then we use it here to read and modify this integer. So you can think of it this way to make pointers less scary. You can, when you see something like this, this is just, this is just a parameter to the procedure here coming in and it just contains a number that is an address to some place in memory that you can use to read and modify that memory. The zero value of a pointer is called a nil. Just like everything else in Odin, if we create a new variable and just say the type name here and we don't say a value, don't give it a value, then it will have the zero value. And in this case, this pointer will be nil. And that means that the, the address inside a pointer is all zeros. So that's called a nil pointer. 
If you try to read or write through a nil pointer, then your program will crash. So code like this, we just create a pointer without giving it a value, and here trying to write the number 10 uh, into this pointer would crash because you have this yeah, pointer has the value nil. In increment number, we could guard against this kind of crash by putting these three lines here at the top of increment number. We say if num equals nil, then we return so that the procedure finishes early. And this would guard against like if I just wrote nil here, for example, or if this pointer here, for example, was just like that, and we sent this in, then normally this would crash, but with, when we have this here, it will no longer crash because it just skips running these lines. However, the example with using a pointer used to increment an integer is perhaps not very useful. What is more useful is passing pointers to struct so that we can read and modify parts or you know fields of that struct. So here I have a new little program and in this program we have a struct called cat. Each cat has a name, an age and a color and the color is an enum and can be one of these values. And in the main proc here I make a cat called patches. It has the age 7 and it is uh, of color calico. Now it's the cat's birthday so we need to increment its age and also print a happy message. So I have the process cat birthday uh, procedure called here and it takes a pointer to a cat as we see up here. Process cat birthday, one parameter cat and it's a pointer to a cat. So this, this makes it possible for us to look directly at the memory of this struct here from within this procedure. The first thing we do here is we do a nil check, so we just return if cat, if you pass the nil uh, pointer, and then we just add one to the cat's age, so cat dot age plus equals one, and then we just print hooray, something something is now something something years old. If we run this program, then it says hooray, patches is now eight years old. So the age has been incremented. Few things to notice here. In the previous example, when we wanted to increment our integer, we had to add in this little pointy thing at the end here. This pointy thing is called the dereference operator, by the way, and it, it makes it possible to both read and write through the pointer, like I said. However, when you have a pointer to, to a struct like this, then you do not need to include that. This, this goes through the pointer and gets the age field so that you can read or write to it. It, it, it is sort of, you can think of it as this thing being implicit in the case of doing dot on a um, struct, a pointer to a struct like this. However, say that we want to replace all the memory inside the struct, not just one field, like in this procedure that I added down here. here this is called replace cat and you it's the exact same as process cat birthday but it it, it takes a, a pointer to a cat and checks if it's nil but what it does is that it just replaces everything uh, it, it writes through this pointer and replaces all the memory at the address that this pointer refers to and in that case you still need to do the little pointy thing do you need to use the dereference operator on the name and write like this? And also notice that you do not need to write uh, cat here like that. It knows that the type that you need here is cat because it says it here, so we don't need to write that in there. That's it for this video. You will be able to read more about pointers in my upcoming digital book on Odin. This book will release in late November sometime and there's a whole chapter on pointers which is a bit similar to this video but there's lots more uh, nuance and some uh, things I had to leave out. So it looks like this and yeah I hope you will enjoy the book when it comes out. Thank you so much for watching, have a nice day and bye bye.